All right, so here we've got a combining like terms expression, and I wouldn't be intimidated by the length of the expression or all of the fractions. What I would do is begin to break things down and then rewrite the expression so that we can deal with it. I notice there's a subtraction sign right here, and I notice that these pair parentheses, right, are being subtracted. So what I'm going to do first is subtract all of the terms inside the parentheses. So I'm going to subtract negative two-thirds, and then I'm going to subtract negative four, right? So I'm going to subtract these two terms here. And this is just something I think I do to rewrite the expression and not lose track of all these negative signs. So we start from left to right. Now first, 3x over 5, I'm going to rewrite that as 3 fifths x. And I think that's a key step um, here, if you think about it, right? 3 times x over 5 is equal to 3 fifths x. We can test this out quickly by plugging in numbers. So for example, if I plug in 2 for x and these two things are equal, I should get the same thing on both sides. So do I? Well, let's try it. 3 times 2 over 5 on the left-hand side versus 3 fifths times 2 on the right-hand side. 3 times 2 over 5 here on the left-hand side, that's 6 fifths. On the right-hand side, 3 fifths times 2, well, 2 over 1, we multiply 3 times 2 to get 6, 5 times 1 to get 5, and we get 6 fifths again. But we can also sh prove that they're equal, I think, in different ways. I'll, sh I'll show it's equal by helping you think about it through different properties. So we have 3 times x over 5. Dividing by 5, right, that's the same thing as what? Well, if you divide by 5, that's the same thing as multiplying by 1 fifth. So we can think of this as 3 times x, instead of dividing by 5, as times 1 fifth. So I'm rewriting this with multiplication. And if you're not convinced that dividing by 5 and multiplying by a fifth are equal, try an example. 10 divided by 5 is 2. 10 times 1 fifth is also 2, right? 10 times 1 is 10 over 5, right? 5 times 1, or you think it's 10 over 1, it's 5 times 1 and that's 10 over 5 or 2. So these are equal. So divided by 5, multiplying by 5, they're equal. Um, or the same thing, mathematically, they're equivalent. So here, 3 times x times a fifth. Now I can use my commutative property to reorder this, right? I can write 3 times a fifth times x. All I did was change those terms around. And now I could associate, I could use the associative property and say I'm going to multiply 3 by 1 fifth first, and then multiply it by x. Well, what's 3 times a fifth? That's 3 fifths times x. So think about what just happened. We started with 3x over 5, ended up with 3 fifths x. These two things are the same. Now, that might not seem significant, but it really helps, I think, a lot of students solve these combining like terms problems. And I think you'll see that in a moment. So we have, what do we write the expression? Plus 34. Now we subtract negative 2 thirds x. Subtracting a negative is the same thing as adding. So we add 2 thirds x. Subtracting another negative 4, that's the same thing as adding 4. Now we have minus 3 tenths times 5 minus x. So the first thing I did was distribute this negative sign, or we can think of it as distributing negative 1. The second thing I'll do is right here. I'll use the distributive property to multiply. 3 tenths, or you can think of this as negative 3 tenths times 5, and negative 3 tenths times negative x, right? Use the sign right here to the left of the term to give it a positive or negative value. So if I rewrite everything, right, with this one change, I get 3 fifths x plus 34 plus 2 thirds x plus 4, now minus, well, 3 times 5 is 15, over 10, right, because you do 10 times just, this is 5 over 1, so it's over 10, minus, well, it's minus x here, but it's minus 3 tenths. So we have negative times a negative, that's a positive. So we have positive 3 tenths times x. And now I'm going to combine like terms. Here are my x terms, I have 1, right, 2, 3 x terms, I'm going to combine those, and I have 1, 2, 
3, notice I include the negative sign here, constant terms. Let's add those constant terms first. 34 and 4 is 38, minus 1.5, right? 15 over 10 is 1.5. So what is 38 minus 1.5? Well, that's just 36.5. So our constant terms equal 36.5. And the x terms might throw you off a little bit because of the fractions and the variables. But really, um, we can use our knowledge of adding fractions to deal with adding these three terms. So we can think of this as 3 fifths plus 2 thirds, I'm just adding the coefficients, plus 3 tenths, right, times x. Right, and we're going to add 36.5 to that. Now that if this confused you right here, just think about any other algebraic expression. I'll write it um, down here and then I'll erase it. If you have 2x plus 3x, what does that equal? Well, 2x is the same thing as x plus x, and 3x is x plus x plus x. So altogether, that's 5x's. But a nice shortcut is to think, oh, well, what's 2 plus 3? Just add these coefficients here, right? 2 plus 3 is 5, and it's in terms of x. So it's 2 plus 3, or 5, times x, which is what we got here, 5x. So that's all we're doing here. We're regrouping all the coefficients together in terms of x. Now, how do you add fractions? Well, there's so many strategies, but I think here what I'm going to do is get a common denominator, right? The least common denominator. We have 5, 3, and 10. And the smallest number they all go into is 30, right? So here, I want to get them all to equal 30. So I'm going to multiply 3 fifths by what? Well, 5 times what is 30? Well, 5 times 6 is 30. So I'm going to multiply 3 by 6, right? And 5 by 6. We're going to change the value of the fraction. So you multiply both numerator and denominator by 6. 2 thirds, multiply numerator and denominator by 10 this time to get to 30. Remember, we're trying to get to 30. And then finally, 3 over 10 multiply numerator and denominator by 3 to get to 30. And again, this is all in terms of x, right, plus 36.5. All right, so now once we have this step, we can add the fractions. We have 18 over 30 plus 20 over 30 plus 9 over 30, and that's all in terms of x, right? Then we have the constant here still, 36.5. So now we just add these fractions, 18, 20, and 9. Well, that, what's that? 18 plus 20 is 38, plus 9 more is 47. So we have 47 over 30. There's no common factors there. x plus 36.5. So this is, right, the same expression, but we combine to like terms. If you're not convinced, you can just plug numbers in, and you'll see that you will get the same result as if you plug numbers into this original Expression. Thanks.